Hi there, and welcome back to our Parts of Speech series. In this lesson, you're going to learn about conjunctions. We'll first discuss what a conjunction is, and then we'll look at the four main types of conjunctions and how to avoid the most common mistake that people make with them. That is, how to punctuate conjunctions correctly in writing. All right, let's begin. As always, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section below and I will talk to you there. Okay, so first, what is a conjunction? A conjunction is a word that connects parts of a sentence. It can connect words or it can connect phrases or even clauses. Look at these examples. In number one, when you go to London, you must try fish and chips. Fish and chips is a popular food in the UK. So here the conjunction and connects two words, fish and chips. In the next sentence, my cell phone is either on the table or in the drawer. The conjunction is the combination of either or and it connects two phrases, on the table and in the drawer. And in number three, can you find the conjunction? The conjunction is but and it connects two clauses. Clauses are just like sentences. Yasmin went to see her manager is the first clause and the second clause is he wasn't in his office. So you see here that conjunctions can connect any two parts of a sentence. All right, so now let's talk about the different types of conjunctions in English. Conjunctions come in four major types. Coordinating conjunctions, these are the words and, or, but, so, yet, for, and nor. Subordinating conjunctions like because, after, although, if, until, etc. Correlative conjunctions, these are pairs of conjunctions such as either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also, etc. So in each one, you see two words that always go together. And finally, conjunctive adverbs. These are words like as a result, however, in addition, and therefore. They're adverbs, but they act like conjunctions. That is, they help to join parts of a sentence. Now, don't be scared by all these names. The names are not important. What's important is knowing how to use the conjunctions correctly. Of course, conjunctions are a huge topic and there are many grammar rules relating to them. So today, we will focus on avoiding the most common type of mistake with conjunctions and that is punctuating them correctly in writing. We won't be discussing correlative conjunctions because there aren't any special punctuation rules with them, but we will be talking about the other three. So let's start with coordinating conjunctions first. Coordinating conjunctions are probably the most commonly used type of conjunction in English. These are the words and, or, but, so, yet, for, and nor. Now the words for and nor can be used as conjunctions, but they're not used a lot. The word for is used much more as a preposition and not a conjunction. But the other five are very common. All right, let's talk about how to punctuate them correctly. On the screen, there are four sentences. You will notice that there are no commas in these. So in all four sentences, I want you to put commas wherever necessary. Pause the video and think about your answers, then play the video again and check. Okay, let's look at the answers. In the first two sentences, did you put a comma anywhere? Actually, you don't need any commas in these two sentences. That's because when a conjunction only connects two words or two phrases, we don't use commas. In number one, the conjunction is and, and it connects the adjectives beautiful and spacious. Only two items, so no comma. In number two, the conjunction is or, and it connects two noun phrases. 
a library and a restaurant. So again, only two items, so we don't use a comma. In sentences three and four, commas are required. When we have lists of three or more items, we use commas to separate them. In number three, we need to buy sugar, comma, butter, comma, flour, comma, and vanilla extract for the cake. Notice that there is a conjunction and before the last item, and the comma goes before the conjunction. Similarly, in number four, there is a list of three items, guitar, piano, violin. This time, the conjunction is or, and just like in the previous examples, we use commas to separate the items, and the last comma goes before the conjunction. Now, there's another very important rule regarding coordinating conjunctions, and that is that when a conjunction connects two independent clauses, you should always put a comma after the first clause. Take a look at these examples. Look at sentence number one. You see here that it has two parts. The first part is Abdul gifted his mother an iPad for her birthday. Now, if you read this carefully, you will realize that this can be a complete sentence by itself. So it's called an independent clause. The same is true for the second part. She loved it. This is also a complete sentence, so it's an independent clause as well. So the conjunction AND connects two independent clauses here. So we put a comma after the first clause and before AND. That is the rule. In all of these examples, there are two independent clauses connected by a conjunction. In number two, Kim wanted to work in Paris is the first clause, and the second clause is she couldn't find a job there. The conjunction but connects these clauses and shows contrast. That is, it shows that the two clauses are opposites. In number three, the conjunction or shows that there are two options. We can go to the movies. That's the first option. It's also the first clause. And the second option is we can clean the house. That's the second clause. For number four, Imagine that we're at a restaurant and you ask me, what do you want to eat? And I say, oh, I'm not very hungry. Now that's the reason. So the result is, I'll just have a milkshake. Both of these are independent clauses. Finally, in number five, you see the conjunction yet. The meaning of this sentence is that Revati is very good at programming, but still she teaches economics. So the word yet is like saying, but still. Here the first clause is, Revati is an expert at computer programming. And the second clause is, she teaches economics. So in all of these sentences, we put a comma after the first clause and before the conjunction. But you have to be careful here. Now have a look at these next two sentences. You see that there is no comma. And this is correct. But can you tell me why there's no comma? It's because in both of these sentences, there's only one clause. In number six, Mr. Burns is the subject, followed by two verb phrases. Made a bad investment is one verb phrase. Lost all his savings is another verb phrase. Remember the rule, if a conjunction only connects two words or phrases, no comma. It's the same in number seven. The subject is I, then there are two verb phrases. Ordered a t-shirt online two weeks ago is the first phrase, and still haven't received it is the second phrase, so no comma. All right, so let's now move on to our next topic and talk about punctuation rules with subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions are words like because, unless, before, after, if, etc. But why are these called subordinating? Well, look at this example. After Louisa gets home from work. Is this a complete sentence? It's not. Because it has the word after in it. If we remove it, the sentence can stand alone. Louisa gets home from work. 
it's fine. But if I say after Louisa gets home from work, you will ask, okay, then what? What does she do? So you see the sentence isn't complete. Thus, this is a dependent clause, which is also called a subordinate clause. The conjunction after makes it a subordinate or dependent clause. So after is called a subordinating conjunction. To complete the sentence, we can add an independent clause. So, after Louisa gets home from work, she likes to watch TV for an hour. All right, now look at these examples. You see three pairs of sentences. In each pair, sentence A and sentence B mean the same thing. But notice that sentences A have a comma, but sentences B don't have a comma. And this is correct. I want you to look at these examples carefully and then say why there's a comma in A but no comma in B. Stop the video if you want, think about it, then play the video again and check. Okay, here's the rule. When you connect a dependent clause and an independent clause, if you put the dependent clause first, you put a comma after it. If the independent clause goes first, no comma. That symbol means no comma. So in all of these, in sentences A, what comes first is a dependent or subordinate clause, meaning it's not a full sentence. So we put a comma after it. In sentences B, the first clause is independent. The dependent clause comes second, so no comma. This is an important rule, so don't forget it. Okay, now finally, let's turn to punctuation rules with conjunctive adverbs. Now you might be thinking, why are we talking about adverbs in a conjunctions lesson? Well, the reason is that some adverbs act like conjunctions, so we call them conjunctive adverbs. These are words like however, therefore, as a result, otherwise, moreover, and so on. Here are some examples. You see that there's no punctuation inside the sentences. That's because I wanted to ask you, how should I punctuate these sentences? Should I put commas? Where should I put them? If you want, stop the video, think about it, then play the video again and check. All right, here's the correct punctuation. What do you see? Well, you see that there are both commas and semicolons. This is a special rule of using conjunctive adverbs. Take the first sentence. There are two clauses. The first is Zach loves living in San Francisco. The second is his wife hates the traffic and the pollution. Notice that both of these are independent clauses. That is, they are full sentences. Conjunctive adverbs are generally used to connect independent clauses. The word however has almost the same meaning as but. You can actually say, Zach loves living in San Francisco, but his wife hates the traffic and the pollution. The meaning is the same. The difference is that however is more formal and the punctuation rules are different. Can you see the difference? With but, we only use a single comma before it. With however, or any conjunctive adverb, the most common way to punctuate them is with a semicolon before and a comma after. You can see this in all of the sentences. There's another way to write them. You can also write them with a period or full stop in front. If you do this, you end the first sentence and then start a new sentence with the conjunctive adverb. That's also correct. And you can write it this way for all of the conjunctive adverbs, therefore, moreover, etc. Sometimes you will see the conjunctive adverb in the middle or end position like you see on the screen now. All of these mean the same thing. Notice that when however is in the middle, it is interrupting the sentence. So we put a comma before and after to make it easy to read. Now, if these rules are a little confusing, don't worry. You will get them with practice. 
But with conjunctive adverbs, make sure to remember the most important rule. Semicolon or period before. The period is also called a full stop in British English and comma after. All right, now let's do a quick recap of all the rules that we've learned in this lesson. And then I will give you a test to see if you can punctuate conjunctions correctly. Rule number one, if a conjunction only connects two words or phrases, no comma. Rule number two, in lists of three or more items, put a comma after each item except the last. Put the last comma before the conjunction. Rule number three, when connecting two independent clauses with a conjunction, always put a comma after the first clause. Rule number four, when connecting a dependent clause to an independent clause, if the dependent clause comes first, put a comma after it. If the independent clause comes first, no comma. And finally, rule number five, when using conjunctive adverbs, either put a semicolon before and a comma after the adverb, or a period before and a comma after. All right, now it's time for the test. On the screen, there are eight sentences, and I want you to punctuate them with commas and semicolons where necessary. Stop the video if you want, think about your answers, then play the video again and check. All right, let's look at the answers. In sentence number one, commas have to go after English and Spanish. This is a list with three items, so we put commas after each item except the last. Remember that the last comma goes before the conjunction and. But in sentence number two, you don't need any commas. This is because and only connects two items here, Tuesday and Wednesday. In number three, there are two clauses. The first is, we didn't know it was going to rain. Then there's the conjunction so, and then the second clause, we didn't bring our umbrellas. Both of these clauses are independent, meaning that they can stand alone as sentences. For this reason, we put a comma after the first clause. What about number four? In this sentence, you need no commas. Notice that the conjunction is but. You might think that it's connecting two clauses here, but that's not the case. There's only one subject, Lamar, with two verb phrases, got job offers from four different companies and didn't accept any of them. So the conjunction is just connecting two phrases and that's why no comma. In number five, we have two clauses. The first clause, when you see Shelley, is a dependent clause because it's not a full sentence. The second clause, can you tell her to come and see me, is independent. Yes, it's a question, but still it's a complete meaningful sentence. So what comes first is the dependent clause with the conjunction when. For this reason, we put a comma after it. What about number six, comma or no comma? Well, how many clauses do you see? There are two. One is independent and the other is dependent. The first clause, I can't log in, is the independent clause because it's complete. But the second clause, because I can't remember my password, is dependent, because it's not complete. Which comes first? The independent clause, so no comma. This sentence is the opposite case to the previous example. Remember, only if the dependent clause comes first, we put a comma after it. In sentences seven and eight, notice that we have conjunctive adverbs however in seven and therefore in eight. So what's the rule with conjunctive adverbs? The rule is semicolon before and comma after. You see this in number seven. Another way to punctuate conjunctive adverbs is with a period before and a comma after. You can see this now with number eight. Both forms are correct. All right, how many did you get right? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this lesson, share it with your friends. 
Remember to subscribe to this channel for more English lessons and I will see you in another lesson soon.